The British Ministry of Defence is considering placing surface-to-air missiles on residential buildings. People in East London have received leaflets saying their rooftops could be used to house the weapons during the Olympic Games this summer. Residents say they're concerned about the safety of the system, claiming it could become a target for attack. Officials stress the missiles are a last resort, which would only be used in case of an extreme terror threat. Well, let's now get some reaction from a London-based investigative journalist who's written extensively about terrorism, Paul Lashman. Uh, one would assume, Paul, that the last time air defence systems were placed on residential rooftops was back during the Second World War in London. So does this really suggest an attack is likely? Well, there's two things. I, I don't think they actually ever put uh, anti-aircraft um, uh, guns or anything on rooftops because they would have shaken them to pieces. But uh, I get your drift. They certainly had spotters and so forth like that. But um, is there a threat? Well, <laughs> That's that's imponderable. We we don't know. I mean, they're 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 what they're doing is preventative, and I think there's a bit of psychological warfare going on here. They're they're I think they're letting anybody who is thinking of making a terrorist attack know that the, these extensive preparations are being made. But um, we're presumably talking about airborne attacks. Um, surely the British air defence system is good enough as it is, isn't it? Well, I imagine the, the, you've, got, you've got to remember these uh, vi, uh, high velocity missiles are quite short range. They're very, they're quite light. You know, they're, they're like a, a large camera, really, on a tripod. That's what they sort of look like. And then they have a, 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 one of the chaps has some equipment, allows them to target. So it's very light and it's only uh, got a range of about five kilometers. So I think what we're looking at here is light aircraft or helicopters suddenly emerging from nearby. I think that's the thought. Uh, you, you mentioned um, my reference to those um, missile defence systems back in the Second World War. Of course, nowadays these systems are a lot lighter. But you did raise a point saying that those systems would, of course, shake a house to bits. The residents who are underneath these missile launchers, they're very concerned if they were to be used. Would they not be in danger themselves? I don't think so. I mean, these, um, you know, there is actually someone standing two foot away from them when these things go off. And I think, I mean, I can understand, I can really understand the residents' concern because they must feel that they're just sort of becoming involved in this sort of military operation. But I, actually, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think actually uh, being in, right. um, they're in, any under, in what, danger. What about the residents' concerns of being targets by terrorists themselves in the knowledge that these missile systems are, are on their rooftops? Well, it, it's possible in the sense that anything's possible. It's all a bit James Bond, the idea that, uh, that you know, the terrorists are going to send small aircraft over and the sun, at the same time send a team of operatives to eliminate the, you know, the army on the top of that particular tower. It all, it's all pushing things quite a long way. Not impossible, but a bit unlikely, I would say. Nevertheless, as an expert on terrorism, are you surprised that these measures have been made so public and are indeed being put in such a public place? Cool. Uh, well, I, as I say, I think what it's about is trying to scare the terrorists off. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, yeah, I don't think they're trying to be secretive about it. I think they're trying to stop it happening in the first instance. And it's all part of a mountain air of hysteria, I think, that's sort of sweeping London a bit, that you've got this huge um, event occurring and there is this sort of looming 9-11 threat about it. I mean, it's just because everybody realises that it's a sort of, it's a terrorist's sort of, ideal situation to have a big event that they could hit. Uh, so I think, sorry, I was just saying that I think the London public are, are getting twitchy because they, it's, it's what it's saying is you're in a lot of, you're a lot of potential danger because actually, just to finish your, your, your point about being on a roof, it's not the people underneath the roof, it's people within five kilometres are in the real danger. If, you know, if those, those rockets are fired, it's got to come down somewhere and they, they explode. So, you know, anybody in a five kilometre range of that is at risk if it's fired. You talk about the fears of, of Londoners and indeed the, the visitors to the Olympics. Would those fears not be allayed by the fact that billion pounds apparently is now being spent on police in the Olympics? Do you really believe that the British authorities are doing enough to make them safe from what you know as a, as a journalist? Well, they're certainly doing a lot, and they're, they're, they're trying everything out. And next weekend, they've got a big uh, terrorist, ex uh, you know, terrorist exercise going on with jets and everything. So they're doing lots of things. But it's like all issues of terrorism. It, everything is true till it's not true. Is you know, they may be able to go through all this thing. Nothing's ha happens, and everybody say, "Well, that was a billion pounds that we really couldn't because of that spending." then it may be that some individual does something so dramatic that they just couldn't think of it, couldn't do anything about it. So it's completely speculative and bizarre 
activity. It's not like dealing with a very obvious enemy that is going to do something at a certain point. You just no idea who these people are, what they're going to do, and when they're going to act. Well, bearing in mind the memories of the Munich Games back in 72, also the 1996 bombing at the Atlanta Games, um, what you're saying really is that you cannot make something like the Olympics 100% safe. That's exactly what I'm saying. Great to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much, Paul. Joining us live there in London, Paul Lashmar. Joining us there. Thank you. Thank you.